Let's talk deals now. It's Monday, so let's focus on M&A. Uh, and and uh, we will speak to, uh, we will talk about the deals that Barclays has advised on this year. And they include Comcast bid for Sky and CME's purchase of NEX to create a trading venue giant. With us now from Barclays, Pierluigi Colizzi, head of EMEA M&A. And also with us here on set in London, Ruth David from our Bloomberg Deals team. Welcome to you both. Uh, Pierluigi, let's come to you then on, on the subject of deals. And I'm, I'm thinking about Italian politics here. Uh, given the tense domestic situation, are we seeing that this is having an impact on Italian companies and their willingness, their eagerness uh, or their ability financially to do deals at this time? Yes. Let's start with investor sentiment in Italy. Certainly it has deteriorated. The um, Italian stock index market is, uh, is the worst performer in Europe so far. The spread over uh, the German government um, bond is reaching 300 basis points again, and we've had a Fitch cutting out its uh, outlook on the rating uh, late last week. I think investors are definitely looking at what the government will do. There's the budget law at the end of September. There's a big focus as to whether the government will be able to match the promises made to the voters. Uh, with the request of our European partners and stay within the parameters that, uh, that, uh, that we are, we're being asked to stay. Uh, from a deal perspective, Italy has been uh, relatively quiet this year. Um, there's only been three large m and deals, there's only been one IPO, so the market is on the sideline waiting for this clarity from... Uh, yeah, is that because of the politics then? It is partly because of the politics. Mm. And just more on M&A broadly, it's been a record year in terms of volumes, but we are seeing some hesitancy from CEOs, you know, whether that's because of high valuations or geopolitical risks in Turkey or in other markets. Just looking ahead for the rest of the year and going into 2009, what do you see in the pipeline? Fantastic. Indeed, it has been a record year for m and So in Europe alone, 1.15 trillion of announced volume this year, which is exactly the same number as the full year for 2017. Yeah. Uh, a couple of drivers. One is for those sectors that uh, have required growth and scale. Um, certainly the funding environment has been very buoyant, both on the debt financing, but also on the equity financing. <coughs> you know, equity um, investors <coughs> have supported M&A. Um, the percentage of transactions that have been funded with 100% stock is up to 22%, which is one of the highest numbers since 2007. The other key driver is that uh, for most of the sectors which actually have required restructuring and rationalization, investor sentiment in the last 18 months has been very much focused and on uh, supporting CEO who take the bold actions with carve-out, spin-off, sale of non-core asset, and make their, the equity story of their businesses more focused and more lean. I think this will continue in 2018 and 2019. I think there's going to be a, a, a stability of the volume, but certainly there are some headwinds. Mm. And uh, those headwinds, I would think, are around three, three topics. One is um, the interest rate environment may turn less benign, and you know, CEOs are particularly careful about that. They, they don't want to enter into a large cash finance transaction at a time when investor appetite for gear balance sheet goes away. Two. Uh, m and is better done when volatility is low, and going back to the Italy theme, but also the Brexit theme, you know, September and October are going to see some very material geopolitical events which may impact the m and market. And third, but this is mostly for those companies that are truly global in nature, the trade dynamics are not helping. You know, we'll see this week what happens on NAFTA, uh, the, there's uncertainty around steel and car tariffs in Europe, there's uncertainty around the extent of tariffs between US and China. All of that is going to be uh, potentially denting yeah. uh, MCOs. And I see some, in linking with that, I, just, I often read headlines about Chinese money and to what extent that is being welcomed in other parts of the world in, in some of this M&A uh, deal making. Um, Pierluigi, just a word on the telecom sector then because uh, we've talked many times about where we might see consolidation in particular in France whether we can go from four to three providers what's the latest reading you get from European regulators about uh, how many players is the right number in uh, European telecoms so four to three consolidation uh, makes 
business sense. There's, uh, you know, in those countries where it has happened, uh, synergies has been around 10% of the operating expenses of the combined businesses. So there's a case for that. On the other side, regulators are concerned about the pricing power and market power of uh, the resulting entity. So what has happened in some cases, they've blocked transactions like in the UK and in Denmark. In some cases, they've asked for remedies which have de facto created a fourth operator again, like in Italy. Now, at the weekend, we saw uh, EU clearing the um, Hutch free deal in Italy. Uh, the Tele2 Deutsche Telekom combination in the Netherlands is under review and certainly the next one to watch is the French consolidation uh, where as you know France, Sweden and Denmark have a free market where this situation of four operators continues and uh, maybe the, market, the, the situation is a little bit more conducive of the French situation today.